Uh, thank you uh, for the coming uh, for uh, my little talk today. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to uh, the Center of uh, Korean Studies. Um, over the past few years, I have been uh, working on Japan's invasion of Korea in 1592 uh, to 1598, which is known as the Imjin War or Imjin Weran uh, in Korea. In Japan, it is commonly called uh, Punoku Keiichi no Eki. Uh, this uh, two volume uh, monograph uh, project has been a great fun for me. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, take a, a sidetrack uh, from the war uh, to uh, discuss a, a sort of art history, border crossing art history that had to do with uh, Korean ceramics used in the culture of tea drinking uh, in Japan uh, for about uh, two centuries in pre-modern times, you know, from the mid 16th to early 18th centuries. In uh, pre-modern uh, Japan, uh, drinking a, a cup of uh, tea was evolved into a, a form of cultural life known as uh, chanoyu that accompanied the employment of uh, famous works of art and uh, craft, or meibutsu in Japanese, Myongmul or in uh, Korean. Uh, Chanoyu was an act with uh, political and uh, cultural implications. Uh, for uh, example, uh, in uh, 1577, uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the man who would send an invading force uh, to Korea uh, 15 years later, uh, took over uh, Kojuki Castle in Harima. This is uh, Harima in central Japan, and uh, uh, Kojuki the Castle, uh, where is it? Uh, here, this one, uh, Kojuki Castle. Um, uh, he uh, decisively uh, delivered uh, a blow to the Mori in Western Japan, uh, who was the arch rival of Hideyoshi's overlord, uh, Oda Nobunaga. Delighted and out of thanks, Oda Nobunaga rewarded uh, Hideyoshi with, uh, guess what, a, a small utensil used in, in Chanoyu. Uh, that's it. And that was uh, this way, uh, this one. He and his troops risked their lives for this little cattle in uh, 1577. Uh, that's it. But Hideyoshi was overwhelmed. This uh, the small utensil was an iron and cattle known as Otogoze Nekama. The deeply honored, Hideyoshi soon used this cattle in the chanoyu that uh, he hosted after the battle. And as such, he treasured, he had treasured it until he died. In Japan from the mid 16th to early 18th centuries, chanoyu constituted a serious politics exercised by the most powerful of the country. The tea utensils used in Chanoyu, which the nation's most powerful and wealthiest individuals vied to possess, were the towering the symbols of power, authority, wealth, or prestige, uh, and so on. Uh, this is a uh, fascinating uh, topic which late Professor Herbert Plutcher explored for many years political authority was uh, coupled with and projected into a ritual order. And interestingly, a tea ceremony was one of the most highly regarded arenas of ritual order, one that gave birth to the aesthetic classification of tea utensils, aesthetics, 
was inseparable from politics. When Chanoyu loomed large in politics during this period, one a particular item notably uh, dominated the fashion of the time. It was what was imported from Korea, uh, tea balls, uh, commonly called Korai e Jawan, Korean tea balls, Goryeo Dawan uh, in uh, Korean. Korean tea balls uh, fashioned a style of uh, Chanoyu known as Wabino Cha or simply Wabicha. Korean tea balls held the key uh, to the aesthetic of Wabicha that began to arise in the early to mid 16th century in Japan. So in this connection, I would like to discuss some aspects of Korean tea balls, which ended the previous era of uh, showing no cha. I will show that what that means, and ushered in the new age of wabicha that would last into the early or well, mid 18th century. Currently, it is known that about 660 Korean tea balls, which originated from this period, have survived in Japan. Many of these tea balls have their own individual names, or mei in Japanese, and their own individual histories that have spanned over uh, four to five centuries. Some of them are designated by the Japanese government as national treasures or important uh, cultural assets. Like this one, uh, this particular tea ball on the left-hand side is a, a national treasure. Right-hand side is uh, an important uh, cultural uh, asset, uh, they are uh, priceless. No matter how wealthy one is, they first cannot buy. In contrast, not a single Korean tea ball has survived in Korea. It is an irony. Some people have very much uh, tried to find the Korean tea balls in Korea sometimes by uh, digging illegally uh, here and there, but all in vain. Uh, to be sure, uh, tea balls were just one of many uh, items used in, in Wabicha that uh, include, as you see here, uh, this is a kettle, and this is a a uh, tea caddy, a uh, tea a container, which has been very valuable. And then uh, this one is uh, a, a container for used water and then uh, uh, water for uh, boiling uh, the tea and then other uh, ladle and, and so on. But the Korean uh, tea bowls were a key symbol uh, that defined the aesthetics of Wabicha. Uh, Korean tea bowls were produced mostly in the southern parts of Korea between the uh, late 15th and early 18th centuries and imported to Japan before the importation of Korean uh, tea balls, Chanoyu in Japan was represented by the style of uh, Shoinu Cha that uh, featured like this one. Uh, karamono or Chinese items. Many uh, tea utensils imported from China in the medieval period. And this one is also Japan's national uh, treasure. So karamono or Chinese items were considered the objects of richness and perfection in the Shoino Cha. The setting of uh, Shoino Cha is like this one. This is the culmination of the style of Chanoyu. The people would gather inside this building and uh, uh, have a tea ceremony using uh, Chinese items, like the one which I showed moments ago. It was <coughs> Murata Shuko, 
uh, this man, a, a Zen monk and a tea master who gave a, a new form to Shoin no Cha by replacing some karamono items with uh, Japanese items, or wamono. This trend was inherited uh, by Take no Jo, uh, this person, a, a Sakai merchant and tea master. Many people in Sakai, a uh, the port city, not far from the current Osaka. And he linked the term wabi to uh, Chanoyo. Take no Jo's a sense of wabi was further fostered by uh, Senno the Wikyu, a, a Sakai merchant and a tea master who perfected the uh, Chanoyu he had inherited from Takenzo in the form of a tea in a, a thatched hut or a swan, like this one. Uh, this is a, a, a tea house, and you can see uh, fundamental differences from the uh, golden pavilion which I showed, where uh, Shoin Cha was, was uh, held. The Suan no Cha is better known as Wabicha, or a tea of wretchedness, or even sadness. But uh, gradually, I'm sorry, the, the, the term Wabi is derived from Wabu, which means uh, to be wretched, or Wabishi, which means wretched and originally referred to the miserable feeling that, uh, that came from material deprivation. In uh, practicing Wabicha, uh, Rikyu first paid attention to uh, Japanese Raku uh, tea bowls, like this one, a uh, black Raku uh, tea bowl, uh, this one. But uh, gradually, he uh, switched to uh, Korean uh, tea bowls. Over time, not only Korean tea bowls, but other tea utensils were also imported from Korea and employed in Wabicha. It is known that the Rikyu initially tried to harmonize and mix Chinese and Japanese items in his quest for beauty, not possessed by either. He eventually found this beauty of the middle, not in either one of them, but in Korean things. The Goraimono, which he thought had a warmth unknown to the works of China and a delicacy of texture and craftsmanship not found in Japan. So as far as Riki was concerned, Korean items perfectly represented the ideal of Wabi. In uh, 1591, Rikyo, who had been a tea master for Hideyoshi, was ordered by his master Hideyoshi uh, to seppuku, to cut the belly. Interestingly, along with his craving for golden tea room, uh, Hideyoshi was also indulged in wabicha and helped it rise uh, to the status of a, a national sacrament uh, by the late 16th century. So how popular were Korean tea bowls in the world of Wabicha? Uh, this one shows the data gleaned from the uh, chronicles of uh, tea uh, ceremonies called uh, Chakaiki uh, during uh, this period. As you see here, in this period, Chinese items, almost more than 90%, but over time, the Korean items were increasing along with uh, Japanese items, ups and downs, but uh, half and half, uh, by the uh, um, mid or early uh, 17th century, uh, Chinese items all died out, not favored any longer uh, in the world of Wabicha uh, in Japan. The Korea uh, tea bowls used in the Japanese Wabicha were different from uh, Korea's mainstream uh, products, uh, such as a uh, salad in the Korea period and white porcelain uh, in the Joseon uh, period. These high-quality wares were produced in public kilns uh, for the court, government offices, and the high end of Yangban ruling class. 
On top of that, the Korean tea balls, the favored in Japanese wabicha, were not originally intended for usage as a tea cup at all. They were simply cheap and crude bowls produced in private kilns for mass consumption. And commoners used them as containers of rice, salted vegetables, I guess this is kimchi, and the soup, the wine, makgeolli, and the like. Nevertheless, Rikyu and other Japanese tea masters found in the simple, coarse, and unpolished bowls imported from Korea an inspiration uh, for the ultimate uh, beauty of wabicha. How were these ordinary ceramics end up being uh, favored uh, in the world of wabicha? In Japan, uh, during this uh, the period of uh, uh, chosen Korea, uh, Korean people did not much enjoy the custom of uh, drinking tea. Uh, back in the uh, Korea uh, period, however, um, uh, tea drinking was actually uh, very popular, as we see in a term like uh, tabansa, which literally means the matter of uh, drinking tea and eating. That refers to the things that happen all too often or all the time. It, this term was coined in the uh, Korea period. Uh, tea was also offered to ancestral spirits, as the term referring to ancestral worship uh, spirits uh, rituals indicated. Ancestral worship rituals were called uh, this one, uh, tare. And the later it's, uh, it's uh, called chare, and the ritual of uh, tea. So in Korea, uh, people uh, practice uh, chare, meaning offering something to the ancestors of the family in the new year or chuseo and some special occasions. The court had a department called uh, Dabang, which was in charge of tea-related rituals, ceremonies, and events. But in today's Korea, Tabang signifies a Starbucks coffee shop. So what a change. In Korea, Korea, tea was uh, uh, cultivated uh, in southern parts of Gyeongsang and Jeolla provinces. And in Jeju Island, cultivating tea was not an easy job. And the peasants who were assigned to send uh, tea products to the government uh, suffered a lot as a saying of the time indicated. Uh, that was, the tea is the blood of the people of southern provinces. The newly established uh, chosen government, which tried to lessen the pain of tea taxation, began to discourage tea drinking customs. Over time, tea culture gradually declined in Korea. As the tea, as tea was replaced, by liquor. After the Imjin War, uh, Korea uh, came to fully embrace the culture of liquor, relegating tea drinking customs to some Buddhist monks and a tiny minority of Confucian scholars only. The chasabar, which meant uh, tea balls of the Korea period, were eventually transformed into uh, sulsabar, meaning liquor bowls. Indeed, uh, uh, Joseon Korea had a culture of liquor. Very contrasting to uh, Tokugawa, Japan. On the other hand, uh, there occurred some concurrent changes in the production of ceramics when the Mongols invaded the Korea kingdom in the uh, 1230s to 1250s. Most of the potters who had produced what is known as, like this one, the Korea uh, Chongja, around the capital Gangjin, Buan, there are some eminent places in Korea, uh, were dislocated and scattered into the interior. These potters 
uh, could not find high quality material in the, their new locations, nor a high demand of a celadon. Instead, they began to produce a coarse, simple style of a celadon, a sort of a quasi celadon, known as uh, this one, Puncheong uh, Sagi, blue powdered the celadon. which are grayish, the pale blue or dim green, are four commoners, not for the uh, coat. At the same time, the coat and high class families favored white porcelain, like this one, uh, chosen white porcelain, which were produced in the public kilns of Gwangju in Gyeonggi province. Saowon, a government office, controlled these public uh, killings and potters who numbered more than 1,000. So white porcelain was a fashion of the time, and the commoners also followed the suit as they dragged into a simple cheap white porcelain products. Amid this trend, the pale remnants of uh, Korea Saladon, namely Puncheong Sagi, were gradually forgotten. But interestingly, Japanese tea masters who opened the new era of Abicha spotted that these coarse products of Punjong Sagi and low quality white porcelain. What was relegated into the backstage of ceramic production in Korea resurrected to the fore in Japan. Korean tea bowls, which captured the aesthetic sense of Wabicha masters in the 16th century and on were various. How to classify them? This is a big headache. Japanese tea masters have classified them into 20 or even 50 or some uh, categories. Based on their parents, these shapes, designs, glaze types, clay materials, origins of production, like this one. And uh, it's uh, somewhat arbitrary. As you see here, based on shapes and glaze, what is Kodai, Katate, uh, Ama, Mori, and so on, and then uh, parents, Mishima, Hakeme, Kyogen, Hakama, Unkaku, and, and this one, uh, the place names. Uh, Kinkai, it's a, a city near Busan called Kimhe, and then uh, Komokai, or Komokae, it's uh, in southern uh, Gyeongsang province. It was a port city uh, in pre times, connecting uh, Korea to Japan. Uh, and it's uh, Wuncheon, but they were called uh, Komogai uh, in, in Japan. But uh, these uh, classific classifications also an indicator of the rich repertoire of Korean ceramics. So roughly speaking, the importation of uh, the Korean tea balls to Japan underwent three different stages. In the uh, first stage, uh, from the late uh, 15th to mid 16th centuries, Korean uh, potters uh, produced ordinary ceramic bowls uh, for domestic markets. But uh, some of their products ended up being used uh, in Chanoyu in Japan. The pirates, merchants from Ryukyu and northern Kyushu, and uh, in particular, Tsushima, the people who saw an opportunity of profit making in the increasing popularity of uh, Korean bowls in Japan, began to smuggle these products into Japan. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there is no evidence that Korean potters were aware of this and uh, that accordingly they did not uh, make ceramic products as China utensils. It means that uh, these products were sold cheap and that uh, traders made handsome uh, profits. It was a big business for them. The uh, Korean government at the time maintained a strict maritime prohibition policy. Those who 
violated the ban on international transaction, transactions of Korean products were subjected to heavy punishment. So it means that the first phase of Korean tables used in Chanoyo were, in theory, all uh, contraband. Among the uh, Korean tables adopted in Wabicha, the most prized ones were those produced during this period. These highly cherished tables included Mishima, uh, Ido, Kyogen Hakama, and so on. In particular, uh, Ido. Uh,